Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. And today I ha I feel a heavy heart thinking about the continuous discussion around safety, around the fact that we don't seem to be doing enough research in the pandemic, and the fact that so many people are still dying. I haven't yet shared some of the recent information out of New Zealand, um, but it is very clear that there is a problem across the world in terms of excess deaths. We need to address it. And in my view, there can be no science without autopsy. Now, if you've got a situation where you have full understanding or as close to full understanding of a disease and you don't think that you need autopsy to corroborate, that's fine. But we have had four years of a pandemic. And as I have always said, people struggle to be able to explain even the, the exact mechanisms of the cytokine storm. Why are some people vulnerable? Why are others not? And then on top of that, we have done an intervention across the world, which is impacting on the immune system. And when you actually think very carefully about COVID-19 and severe COVID-19, just remember this. It is not the virus that kills you. It's the immune system. It's the cytokine storm. The viral infection causes inflammation, but it doesn't cause anyone to die. What causes them to die is that cytokine storm. And if you don't quite understand that, just reflect on the fact that neonates don't die with COVID-19 because they have such a poor immune system. So the immune response and the way the immune system responds is very, very important. So today I want to talk about another case, which is about aortic dissection. This was from 2022. And it's because I'm following on the discussion that we had last week with um, Hetty Simoes, who lost her son, and we'll be looking back at his case as well, which was aortic dissection. For some reason, they don't like me to talk about this. And so whenever this occurs, there is a restriction on what happens to the information. I can expect that that will happen again, but it doesn't mean we don't talk about it. Now, people will wonder, why do I keep banging on about autopsy? And autopsy, as far as I'm concerned, especially in the context of COVID-19 and our actions after the, um, the beginning of the pandemic, is that we need to be checking and making sure that unusual immune responses are not occurring. Because this is what occurred with SARS-CoV. When they tried to develop um, strategies to manage the original vir variant virus in, from 2003, they found strange immune pathology on autopsy. And so my rule is very simple. If you haven't done autopsies, how do you know? And you have to remember that about April of last year, I did this presentation where we had the first full autopsy, the first one in 2023 on a COVID vaccinated death. Now, how can you be saying you're doing the science when you're not even looking to see if there are any unanticipated issues, especially when there were unanticipated issues that occurred with the original variant of the virus, which is SARS-CoV. So this is the perspective that I have. And this is what I'm trying to see if I can tease out. Before I talk about the uh, information with regards to this um, particular case, I'll quickly run through um, the basics so that you understand why this is important in terms of aortic dissection. I've done this before, but just in case you haven't seen it, here we go again. In this image here, this shows you an aorta. So this is the heart in the background. Uh, you can see the heart here. And where it's bright red is the aorta. And it makes this nice hook and goes down. This is the abdominal aorta. And then it splits to go to each leg. And then it becomes the femoral artery. This is one of the branches of the three main branches here, the axillary artery on the left-hand side. So this aorta is what they had found got damaged in these two autopsy cases. It's so serious because 
aortic dissection, which is what caused the death in both cases, occurs extremely quickly. Now, when we look at a muscular artery, and that's what the aorta is, you can see here, this is a normal artery, and in the middle here is the muscle, the muscle layer, and there is a layer, a band of elastic almost on the inside and another band of elastic on the outside. That allows the artery to be able to stretch uh, with each heartbeat. And then what you can have is that you can have damage to this lining here, this blue lining, and it causes blood to seep out into the muscle. And that's what then becomes the dissection. And it could look something like this. This is about three different types. And essentially, in our discussion here, we'll be focused primarily on the type 1, sometimes type 2, where the dissection occurred in the ascending aorta and then went down into the heart. And it's because the blood seeped into the heart, that's why it caused such sudden death. And again, breaking down the, uh, the images of a muscular artery, this is it. Here, showing the different linings of it. This is on the inside of the blood vessel, the endothelial lining. This is the muscular layer, and you can see tiny bits of yellow here, and that's the elastic layer. This is what it would look like here when you cut the section. And very importantly, this is the bit I want to highlight, these blood vessels that supply all of these tissues. So it's important to know that the blood in the bloodstream is not really supplying other than the endothelial lining, it's the um, vasovasorum that are supplying the blood supply to the muscle and to the outside layers of the artery. Uh, this is it here, a bit closer. And again, you can see this part here is the tunica media. That's the muscle and the elastic. This is important to know because this is where the tear tends to occur in terms of the damage with the aortic dissection. So when it rips through this, and then the blood starts to seep down, that's where the dissection will tend to occur. And in the context of the aortic dissection in both of these cases, it was because of inflammation in these blood vessels here. So it wasn't necessarily the lining of the blood vessel here that was having the problem. It was the blood vessels around the artery that normally supply all the nutrients to keep it going that were inflamed. So that's the baseline of what it is that we're looking at. And when we come now to look at the cases, you can then understand a bit more about why we're looking at it. So the first case was in, again, a Japanese study. Um, now what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the actual paper here. This is, I'll show you this here again. So this is the paper here. And again, you see November 2022, autopsy case of aortic dissection complicated with histiolymphocytic pericarditis and aortic inflammation after mRNA COVID-19 vaccination. Now, before I go any further, I want to just clarify something here. Because a lot of people say, you know what, this is rare. I'm only talking about two cases at the moment. So, you know, what's the big deal? You know, if you've done billions of doses and only two people have died from aortitis, then what's the worry? My point is that we haven't looked for it. So we don't know if it's only two people that have died. Additionally, we have a situation where in the UK, at least, there is a 22% increase in excess deaths at home, sudden deaths. If we are not doing autopsies on all of those patients, we have no idea what the mechanism of death is. And so that's what needs to be studied. But even more importantly, you have to remember that, as I said, one of the mothers of a 34-year-old who died uh, suddenly from aortic dissection it was not letting it go. And it was her work that cracked open an important piece of the puzzle. So when you say only a few cases, let her respond to you so you understand what she's meaning. It is not rare when it's your child. And to those people that say, well, it's for the greater good, I say, well, which one of your children are you going to be willing to give up for the team? That's what people have to think about. And you cannot just flippantly say, well, we saved lives. Give me your child. Let your child die. And then let me ask you if you still feel that way. 
powerful words from Hetty, and I think that this is the point, is that we need to understand it. Why is it occurring? What is the mechanism? Does it also involve other blood vessels? Those are the questions that we need to try and clarify. When we look at this case here, this was a 90-year-old gentleman, and he clearly was relatively well beforehand. And what they found is that he had a few days of fatigue and a shortness of breath. Uh, he was then diagnosed with heart failure, given some medication, and then he collapsed and died about four days after he had the consultation. And he was about two weeks after he had received his uh, vaccination. And so when they looked at the heart surface, they found that there was inflammation of the lining of the heart, the pericarditis. Um, with macrophages and lymphocyte infiltration. And when they do the histology, this is what I'm saying, oftentimes can get left out, it fit with post-vaccination myocarditis. And as well, he had extended inflammation of the aortic adventitia, um, which was a possible cause of the aortic wall fragility, followed by dissection. So this is then getting back to the point that I was making with regards to the outside lining of the heart. And this is what it would look like. It is the adventitia is this outside bit that got inflamed. It weakened his blood vessel. Then it tore and then he died. It's unclear if he had any element of dissection before. It wasn't mentioned in the autopsy report. But the main point is that he had inflammation in that region of his heart, of not just his heart, but the lining of the blood vessels. Um, I'm just looking at some of the images here. I'll just show you some. This is, the, uh, this is from the 90-year-old gentleman. This is his heart here. Um, in, and they're looking at this here. This is the pericardium. This is all the blood that was around the heart. And this is what caused his death suddenly is that the blood leaked around the heart so that the heart couldn't properly contract. And so even though it occurred in the heart, the primary damage was actually inflammation in the lining of the blood vessels, the, the aorta. And when they did the histology, uh, this is now the histological examination in his case, and they looked at different cell types, they found mainly it was CD8 macrophages that were occurring in the adventitia of the aorta. So these would have been, so these little brown areas here are the macrophages that they have stained. And so it was primarily um, CD68 macrophages doing a lot of the damage. What we need to understand is whether or not this is a pattern that occurs, because when I looked at our case last week, and we were looking at um, the 34-year-old who died. Um, he also had, and this is this is his report here, he also had um, inflammation in the pericardial sac, lymphocytic infiltrates, indicative of pericarditis and myocarditis. Again, typical of what could happen after the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines. What was different is that he seemed to have eosinophilic infiltrates. And this suggests some kind of allergic response. Now, this was his first dose. So it's not clear why that would happen. It's a hypersensitivity response that had occurred. And it's different, it seems, from the situation with the 90-year-old. I think this may have been his third vaccine. So based on the fact that you can have IgG4, maybe this was why you didn't see that allergic type response that can sometimes occur. The main point that I am talking about in relation to this is that I still maintain that from my autoimmune paradigm and for people who don't quite understand the autoimmune bit, it's where the immune system is doing the damage. Um, and I believe this can be triggered by the infection, which is through the spike protein. And then theoretically, any other form of spike protein can trigger that kind of autoimmune response. It's just different. And therefore, you have to actively look for pathology. And the only way that you will do it is through autopsy or even biopsies. That's why I keep on hammering it home. The truth is, is that it's so important that I can't find any good scientist who would actually refute that. 
They may say, well, we don't know if we need to do it, but it should be done. Nobody would say if you can do it, you shouldn't do it. And in the context of not having clarity on the mechanisms why this is occurring, why would we have this aortic inflammation? Why are we having so many cases of um, of pericarditis and myocarditis? Why are we having abnormal patterns occurring in the heart with regards to the use of energy? These things you will only start to make sense of when you start doing histology, looking in detail as to which cells are present in the muscles, in the tissues, and then you can extrapolate it to understand whether or not there are issues you have to look out for. That's the point of this. Just remember, in the long run, our job is to advocate for the patients. Our job is not to support politicians or to support the industry or to play along with everything else. No, we are supposed to be objective. We ask the hard scientific questions. We force regulators to make sure that everything they're doing is in the benefit of the patient. Asking questions is a good thing. It shouldn't be censored. It shouldn't be shut down. It only happens when you don't have answers. That's the problem at the moment. We don't have enough answers. Remember, I am looking actively for autopsy reports, and believe me, they are few and far between. We need thousands. And if anything that needs to happen is that we need as many autopsies to be independently reviewed, assessed, and understood in order for us to make sure that we are on the right track. Have a good evening.